Hello. In my previous video I showed you how to draw a simple chart in Excel to show your uh, well savings or whatever you want it to represent. But a series of numbers, how to plot them in a line in Excel and also to set a target. Um, this is Excel 2007 but it's practically identical in 2010 and not very different in 2013 either. Um, and also how to plot an automatic trend line. I chose the polynomial type. Um, and in this video I'm going to go a bit more advanced because although you can see from trend lines whether you're roughly on target or not, it's hard to read off from the graph how much you need to save each month to actually reach that target. Um, and I'm going to show you a way to calculate that. It's kind of complex and simple at the same time. Excel is doing all the work, but it's kind of, well, you'll see. Um, first of all, a little note about this polynomial trend line. Let me just remove it for the moment. I'll add it back now. When you choose polynomial, there's second order, and you go to third order, and they it gives it more data points to use, or, or a more complicated formula basically to use. So you can experiment with which, whichever one roughly fits your data, and as you trend that into the future, you'll you'll hope that that is going to give you a good idea. It it clearly observes you were ahead at the beginning, and you're not so ahead now. So it's thinking maybe you're going to go off down here, or maybe you'll you'll recover again. Well, that's up to you what you think. Um, the other, the higher orders, really are no use. Uh, they go, they go absolutely haywire if we go too far. Um, but third and second order are pretty good for doing trend lines, and so is, of course, a, the the basic one. Um, but I'm going to do a little what if analysing for us now. So just move the graph across just to, just a touch to give us a bit of room here. Let me put it here. I'm going to draw a little table up. They usually hyphenate it, don't they? That'll be the heading, and this will be where we put our data. Okay. You need a number of values, and I'm going to put them in, and I'll explain what it's all about. Or you'll see what it's all about over time. Present value is what you've got at the moment. Um, so if we look at our numbers up here, right at the moment, or according to this chart, we've got 3,409. Okay, so that's where we're starting. Okay, yeah. Oops. So 3409. I put a minus sign in front of it. And I put a minus sign in front of that. You'll see why in a moment. Uh, if we go to the, f I'll explain now. We're going to use some financial functions, and in the brackets here is the name of a financial function, um, PV, present, present value, and this cell will be for calculating the present value given future figures, um, but we already know what we've got. But if you want to calculate it, you can, and I'll show you the way. The payments, this will be how much you're saving and there's a, a function for that too. This will be to calculate how much you need to save a month. You're hoping you're saving 50 a month, maybe, on average. Then there's the number of months in a year. Of which there are 12 in which you save. And the number of periods total that you want to save for. type. That's the number of periods total, um, of which, if we go to the end of our graph, let's see, we're starting in March 2014, uh, and we go to March 2017, that's three years, so it'll be 36 months, okay. There will be 36 months. Then we need to know 
if we're saving, we should be able to get some interest, right? So the annual interest. I know these days it's derisory, um, 3%. There we go. If it doesn't show the percentage sign, um, by the way, when you type it in, um, you can go to number, set it as a percentage point, OK. And that's it. If it insists on showing 300, then type in 0 0.03 and it'll, it'll work out right. Um, and then the that's then we need the interest rate per period. There's a function for that. Do. Roughly, it is the annual interest rate, which is in cell Q10 divided by 12, which is in cell Q8. That's, it's not exactly that because you have compound interest effects and things of that sort, but for a, a rough calculation it's pretty close. I mean for a few years it's, it's near enough. Then we have the future value. This is what we want to reach, our target, which is £6,000 if you recall. And this functions, or these functions expect you to decide whether you're going to pay in at the beginning of the month or the end of the month. Or end. Um, it doesn't make much difference, but if you're getting interest, you want to pay in at the beginning of the month, ideally, so you get interest for that month. Now, the reason, um, and this should be minus 50 as well, actually, the reason it's negative is because this the formula the functions here are designed for working out payments for paying off debt but we are not paying off debt we are saving so um two figures the present value has to be a minus debt because it's a surplus and the payments have to be a, a minus payment because we're adding <laughs> savings okay so that's why they're negative now our target is 6,000. How much do we need to actually save each month to get 6,000 pounds? I've guessed 50, but I don't know if that's true. So we clear that cell and we go to our financial functions on the formulas, financial, and we look for the payment function, PMT. Pre-money tension and pop it helps you do the formula. What is the rate? That is the rate per period. The interest rate. How many periods? Well we worked out it was 36 periods, right? Present value? That is 3409. Future value? We want to reach £6,000 in those 36 months and the type is we're paying in at the beginning of the month. There it is. You just say OK. And it says we need to save £60 and 20p per month, it can be dollars or whatever, to reach our £6,000 in 36 months. Now you might think, well, can we double check this calculation? Let's do it. 60 pounds and 20p times 36 months plus 3409 is how much we've got now and it's low it doesn't make 6000 why is that because we've got interest if i change that interest to zero we'll find out, assuming we can't get any interest for some reason. See, the payment goes up. There's a formula in that cell now because we used the financial functions and it plonked it in for us. If we save £71.97, I'll bring the calculator up again, £71.97 per month times 36 months, plus 3409 there we are on target 
barring eight pence. That's pretty good. So that's that's that. Now supposing we know that we're going to save um, seventy pounds a month, and we don't know how long we're going to have to save it for to reach our target. Now supposing we want to increase our target to seven thousand. Okay. How long? How many months do we need to save seventy pounds for to reach that? We go to the n per function, the number of periods. Empty the cell. Let the financial function fill it in for you. n per number of periods. The interest rate per month again. Well, we'll keep it at zero. Why not? Okay. The payments. Well, we're going to do payments of seventy pounds a month. Okay. The amount we've got to start with, present value. Oops, we have a mistake. Let me stop. Cancel. This has to be negative, remember. We're paying off debts. Or not paying off debts. Okay, now let's do it again. Number of periods. These two must be negative. Right. It's kind of weird, but it works. Number of periods. Okay, the rate. Naught. The payments, the present value, the amount we have at the moment, the future value, our target, 7,000. And we're going to pay in every month, at the beginning of the month. 51.3 months we have to save £70 for at 0% interest. Of course, if the interest is more, then the number of months we have to pay, we have to save up, goes down. Supposing we know we're going to be able to save 36 months, and we're going to be able to save, oh, I don't know, 80 pounds a month, minus 80 pounds a month, minus. How much will we save up in that time? Financial. Let's calculate the future value. Where is it? Under F, probably. There. Yeah. The interest rate again per period. Okay. The number of periods we're going to save for three years. The payments are going to be eighty pounds. The present amount we have, three four oh nine, and we're going to put the money in at the beginning of each month. Therefore. We will get six thousand seven hundred and forty six months pounds if we save eighty pounds for thirty six months at three percent interest rate on our savings. So this is the way you can calculate the futures based on these numbers. Um, just empty the cell and pick the formula that you need to use and fill in the fill in the little dots and it'll do it for you. Okay, I hope that has been helpful and goodbye.